Hey, it's Kevin Tofel with Gigaohm. And if you didn't hear, last week was a big battle between two 7-inch tablets, two brand new ones. Or are they e-readers? I'll let you decide. This is the $249 Nook tablet. This is the $199 Amazon Kindle Fire. Both of these devices run Android. Both have 7-inch screens. Both screens are the same resolution. Both can run Android applications. You can use both to read books or magazines. You can even watch movies, run apps, listen to music. It's all the same stuff. So really, what's the difference? Let's take a closer look and I'll show you what subtle differences there are to help you decide which of these two e-readers or tablets you want. All right, let's take a closer look at the hardware of these two devices. We've got the Nook tablet on the left, the Kindle Fire on the right. I'll start with the Kindle because that came out first. This is a very uninspiring design. It's very plain. It's not until you look at the back where you see it says Kindle. It's got a nice grippy back, which I do like. On the bottom of the device, we've got a headphone jack, USB port, and power button. I'm not a fan of the power button right here because I've accidentally, when I'm holding it, I have hit that power button and put the device into sleep mode. On the top, we've got a pair of speakers. I'm not a fan of these speakers either. I prefer using the headphone jack because the speakers just don't have a lot of sound. Uh, the quality is average at best, quite honestly. Other than that, it's just a slab. I mean, there's nothing fancy about the hardware. It's also it's very similar internally to the, to the Nook tablet. Let's put that down for a second. We'll take a closer look at the Nook tablet. Same seven inch screen. It's got a hardware home button here. Also has a little magnetic slot here or cover for a slot that's for a SD expansion card so you can change out or add memory to that on the bottom we've got a USB port on the top we have a small microphone and a headphone jack the left side we've got our power button up top I really like that I'm not holding the device up there and on the top right we've got the volume up and down just have the single speaker back here, but even though it's only a single speaker, I like it better in terms of sound quality over the Kindle Fire. In terms of size, these are both 7-inch slates. You'll see, though, that the Nook is a little bit taller. You can see down here, it just extends a little bit. And it's also a little bit wider. If I put one on top of the other and I've lined it up on the right side, you can see some excess here. So it's a little bit wider. The thickness of it they're actually fairly similar. The Kindle Fire on top is very rectangular, as we've already said. The bottom, the Nook, it's rounded, but I'd say it's about the same thickness, to be quite honest. I will say this, I like the, the feel of the Nook in my hand. It doesn't hurt, it doesn't have sharp edges, it just feels nice. I really like that. Screen-wise, the Nook has a anti-glare type display, although you can see me right there, there's some glare. If I go to the Kindle Fire though, yeah, I could shave with that thing. That's that's a mirror right there. So, all right, let's power on both devices. And we can take a look, where's that power button? There it is. At the home screens, I'm gonna unlock both. And that's the difference in terms of the look and feel of the user interface. Um, again, we'll start over here on the right side. Everything is really all in one spot for your Kindle. You've got notifications up at the top left, just like you would have for Android, which is great. Close those. You can you have a search bar. You've got your settings up here. Note that there's no hardware volume up or down on the Kindle Fire. So what you have is you have the settings. You always have a volume here. I have both devices set to half bright brightness, by the way. Uh, let's see what else we have. So you've got the most recently used items here. And then you can save favorites on the ever-expanding bookshelf down here. So if I wanted to, let's say, add my Beatles 1 album, I just tap and hold and say add to favorites, and now it's been added. Now some early reviews said you can't modify these, but that's actually incorrect. I can, if I want, I can move this down to whatever shelf I want, that's not a problem. So you do have full control over that. So that's the interface. This kinetic scrolling, it takes some getting used to because everything has to be set just right before you tap on it. Sometimes I tap and it doesn't, it doesn't uh, register. So um, you'll see there, again, we have the, whole, the home button right here. There's no hardware home button, so you're constantly going into the, the app and hitting 
home on whatever app you're using. Now let's contrast that interface with the Nook. And if anybody has looked at or bought a Nook color in the past year, this is all the same as before. You have your books, newsstand, movies, music, and apps down below. You've got your home button. You can quickly jump back into whatever you're reading by pressing the little book button. So there's the book I was reading. I can go back and pressing pressing the Nook button actually gives you all these other options. Home, library, shop, search, apps, web, and settings. I find that there's quite a few taps to do the same thing, but that's just me. You can also pin applications to your home screen, which I've done with the Netflix app. I've got a magazine here. I've also got magazines over on the Kindle. Um, and then like Android, you can have different screens and so on. So you can, you can resize these um, items here, which is nice. So you can really customize if you'd like. Um, getting back to the bottom section here, and this is where notifications would show. I don't have any right now. Uh, you've got these different areas very similar to the Kindle Fire, but I'm going to point something out real quick. Let's go to the music store. Well, there really is no music store. It takes you to music apps. So you don't have an ecosystem there for music. Uh, if I do the same for movies, again, there's no ecosystem as of yet, but Barnes & Noble says they're working with a content provider. So they just point you to different apps. That's very different, obviously, than Amazon, which offers a, a richer ecosystem. So up here when we've got newsstand, that would be magazines, books, music, video, docs, apps, and web. That's it. I mean, that's all you really have in terms of the native functionality. I think that's more than enough. That's what this device is intended to give you. Uh, we can go into music. I was in there a little bit earlier. There we go. You have, I like how you have the cloud, what's in the cloud that's your music versus what's on the device. I only have the Beatles on the device right now. Uh, if I go to albums for a second, that's all I have again on the device. Go to cloud. Everything I've uploaded to Amazon's cloud is there. And since it's there and I'm connected to Wi-Fi, I can just tap and all of a sudden I'm streaming that music. It's already buffered it. It's there. I can download it if I would like to as well. So that's kind of nice. Let's uh, pause that though. So we don't want to listen to that the whole time. You can multitask and have the music playing in the background, so that's not a problem. Video, again, um, there's an advantage here with the Kindle Fire and that you have uh, the movies and TV shows and so on that you can rent. And then if you're a Prime customer like I am, you can say, view all my Prime Instant videos. And I'll go to, uh, let's go to TV for a second. And let's say I just want to watch Lost. It would normally be $1.99 to rent, but because I'm Prime, there's no charge, so I will resume, put this in landscape mode. I don't even know where I left off, but then there you go. Now you're streaming over Wi-Fi. You can't download the movie. You have to watch it over Wi-Fi, but still you have the option to, to at least watch a movie without sideloading the application or an application, I should say. Speaking of applications, um, both of these devices have an app store. I find that the Nook has fewer apps in there. Um, some of the ones that I wanted and have used through Amazon uh, were not here. So let's go to apps. I've got a camera in between me and the device, so it's a little tricky here. So here we've got your app store, apps you'll love, check for updates, and so on. Um, these are my apps, but if I hit shop now, I can then shop, go to games, and the app store itself, it just seems kind of not as intuitive or maybe there's just too much redundancy, I guess, because um, as my podcast co-host Matt Miller pointed out, if you were to go to um, look for Angry Birds, you'll find it in kids and games and education. You know, Angry Birds is not what I would consider, there you go, there's a perfect example. I'm in education and we've got Angry Birds. So uh, I don't quite understand that. It seems like they're trying to fill the app store uh, by categorizing things in multiple places. So let's talk about the reading experience because I find it very good on both. Go to home, I'll open up a book I was reading. Um, you can certainly customize anything you'd like here. Just tap, and you've got options to find, share, change the text, the brightness, and so on. Uh, you can create notes. You can share bits, I believe, on Facebook and Twitter. Let me see. I forget. It's been a while since I checked those options. There you go. So I can share a quote. 
right there, which is kind of nice. I don't want to do that. But here we go, we've got our ebook reading. It all looks good. Same thing on the Kindle, which is very much, I mean, if you've used the Kindle app, you obviously are going to be familiar with this. So, um, let's see, these, I haven't downloaded anything, so those are all on in the cloud. So I'm just going to grab a book right now. Did I download it? There it goes, it's downloading now. There it is. Say device. And open the book. And again, it's the same reading experience. Oh, I'm at the end. Whoops, I've already read this book. That would be the problem. I was wondering why I didn't do anything. So, what we can do is tap. And, whoops. Tap and go to the beginning. Beginning. There we go. And you can look things up in the dictionary highlight, make notes, and so on. It's all the same. I mean, if you've used Kindle, it's all the same. And the same goes for the Nook, if you use the Nook app, so. Uh, I do like how they show you on the home screen what percentage you've actually read. That's pretty nifty. Um, magazines. A lot of people are not happy with the magazines on the Kindle Fire, and it wasn't until just a few minutes ago that I actually put a magazine onto the Nook. So let's go to my magazines. Here we go. It's running times. Unfortunately, it's the same magazine. It's just two different issues. Um, but here you can see you get this nice page turn animation and so on. It can be tricky to read though, so you've got to do a lot of pinching and zooming. Which I totally understand. It's tough on a um, it's tough on a 7-inch tablet. It's no less tough here on this 7-inch tablet, quite honestly. You don't get the fancy animation. You'd still have to do your zooming in and so on. But here's one thing I do like. The option to go to... Let me see if I can find it here. There's an option to go to Text View. And when I go to Text View, if you're at all familiar with um, Instapaper or the the uh, reader functionality in iOS that strips out all the content, not the content, but it strips out all the formatting of a web page, so that way you can read things easier. That's exactly what this does. And, and quite a few people who are complaining about this on the Fire, they all use Instapaper or Reader on iOS, so I'm not sure what the difference is. I like this because it tells me I get all the pictures of the magazine, I get the uh, word count, and then it's just like an ebook. So all the ads are stripped, Everything is there, the pictures are there, so you don't get the formatting. I don't, I'm not sure why that's a problem for some people because, quite honestly, again, you get the, you get no ads and you get to read what you would like to read and you get all the pictures. So, so I do like that. Other than that, let's see, what have I not shown on these two devices real quick? Well, we have docs, we have apps. Obviously, ah, we, oh, we got web browsing. The Silk browser, I'm not finding it to be much faster. Um, it just seems to be pretty much the same as any other mobile browser to me, so I'm not seeing the big benefit there. I'm just go to JK on the run while that loads up and actually open up the mobile site. So let's get rid of that. Go to regular view. I'll let that load. What I'll do here is do the same thing. I'll go to the web. I already had the page up. What I'll do is reload it mobile. I'm not doing a speed test here, I'm just showing you that both of these devices are, are more than capable of, of viewing web pages. There we go. They're still loading, so there, there's going to be some lag on both of them. But it works just like an Android browser, just like you'd expect. Tap on both. Again, I'm not doing a speed test, although it does look like the Nook is faster. And uh, we can zoom in and read the, the text. Looks pretty nice. I do like how we have tabbed, true tabbed browsing here on the Fire, so I can add new tabs. That's great. Here it's a new window, so it's kind of like what you may be used to on, uh, on a native mobile browser. So that's that. And 
Let's see, I showed you the app store on the one. Let me just show you the app store on the other. Again, this is where the fire says, hey, I've got cloud stuff, I've got device stuff. So these are all the apps I bought from the Amazon app store on other devices before it even had the fire. These are all in the cloud. These are on the device. If I want something that I have in the cloud, I would just say AccuWeather, grab it. It's loading, install, downloading, so on and so forth. So there's a nice hybrid mixture between cloud and device here. The benefit here is that you have more storage space for apps. You have uh, 16 gigabytes internal storage versus eight, and you have that expansion card right underneath here, the expansion slot, I should say. So that may be everything we have. So for now, let's come back to a brief overview and talk a little bit about which each of these device, uh, devices would be for, who, who they would be for. So after taking a closer look at these two devices, which would I recommend? Quite honestly, I don't think you can go wrong with either one of them. If you want to spend $250, this does the trick. If you want to spend $199, this does the trick. They both excel for what they offer. Now, if you were somebody who would like to root around and hack a bit and turn the device into an Android tablet, I would recommend the Nook tablet in that case. Why would I say that? Well, for the extra $50, you're getting more flexibility because you have more memory inside, you can expand the memory inside. And the Nook tablet, I'm sorry, the Nook Color, which came out a year ago, has a thriving community that has already built Android firmware to let you turn this into a actual Android tablet. If you're a mainstream customer and is not interested in hacking about, you just want to use the device right out of the box as it's intended, then I would say the Kindle Fire is probably worth the look, especially if you are an Amazon Prime member, which gives you extra incentives such as the free streaming. Even if you're not a Prime member, I'd probably still go with this, and I'll tell you why. Because there's an ecosystem here that is not found on the Nook tablet. You can certainly use third-party apps to get music and videos here, but you can get them directly from Amazon. And if you're already doing that, buying MP3s, for example, from Amazon's music store and storing them in the cloud, it's all right here. One touch and you're streaming that music. So that would be my take. Again, I don't think you could go wrong with either one of these. In fact, my wife has decided after using both of these that we're gonna keep this one. I bought it for myself. She likes it so much, it's now hers. She played with it for about four hours last night, couldn't put it down. She did like the Nook, but going back to my ecosystem question, when I told her that you couldn't buy music from these folks, that was it right off the bat for her. She did not want to get into adding music on her own. So that's our take. You can't go wrong with either one. It's a great time to enjoy the portability and flexibility of a 7-inch tablet. Or is it an e-reader? <laughs>